Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where sadly it is my last day with the GT Black Series here in Dubai. What a place, but this means there are two things that we need to talk about. The first is what's next for the Shmi Mobile, given I've talked about some onwards travels and I can give you a little clue it's not going straight back home. And secondly, we need to do a bit of an inspection. And the reason I say that is because during the time out here, I have driven the car 2,700 kilometers in some pretty humid, hot, dusty air. I've had two fairly hard wearing track days at Yas Marina and the Dubai Autodrome. As a result, the tires are pretty shot. But also over those kilometers, I have driven over hundreds of speed bumps every single one of which has scraped the underside of the car. And I'm a bit anxious to see how that's going to look. So today we are heading to German Experts, a leading independent workshop that have opened recently in Dubai. Their main base was in Abu Dhabi. They've opened a new location here so that we can pop the GT Black Series up on the ramps to take a proper look at it. And I don't know how that's going to go. Then of course, afterwards, we need to say farewell to it, dropping it off at cars for its onward travels from here and I haven't helped life by parking it on a beach either. I've just thought about that, cup two hours. Let's hope we're not gonna get stuck. Let's have a full run through what's next and what's happened to this car during the stay out here in Dubai. Before we get on the road, or perhaps even get started heading across the sand towards German experts to discover what exactly I have done to this car and whether there is any damage, let's have a quick update with the GT Black Series and how it's been out here and what the intended plans are for where it's going to be heading next. Now I say intended because with the world at the moment, who knows what might or might not be possible. And unfortunately my first choice option for where it would go next is a no-go. So I've had to come up with some new plans, but believe me, they are going to be beyond effort pick and we'll get to that in just a moment but it's been completely surreal having this car here as I said it is the reverse of where this channel began filming cars from this region the Middle East visiting London to have now brought my car from London out here to Dubai, to have taken it to Jebel Jace at Ras Al Khaimah, to have had it in the car parks in Abu Dhabi for the Yas Marina F1 Grand Prix, to have been all around Dubai with it, photos in front of the skyline, we've got the marina skyscrapers just over that away, but also to go to the Burj Khalifa, Dubai Mall, Maidan Bridge, Museum of the Future, to have this car in its solar beam glory looking astonishing out here in the light. And what a drive it's actually been. But let's talk about the intended plans quickly, because you might remember when I parked it up before, I touched on hopefully taking it out to Japan. Now, unfortunately, as I said, that's a no-go at the moment, a little bit too complicated with all of the travel restrictions. However, the plan now is to send this car to the USA to bring it over for plenty of things. It will probably go by sea because from here to even the East Coast is a very long way and by air it's extraordinarily expensive. But I've got a lot of things in the works. Of course, the GT500 is still in Miami. We plan to take the Zenvo if it's delivered over for the summer. So it could be that we have the three cars in the yellow, green and purple, which will look crazy, out there together. Let's see if that happens, a bit more on that later on. But for the moment, obviously it might not have been the smartest idea to park it right here, but with the low sun, that wing shadow does look pretty cool. I've driven it about 2,700 kilometers in total while it's been here in Dubai. The car now has about 7,500 kilometers or just shy of 5,000 miles. So it's had a pretty good innings considering, well, after it was resprayed, it's only had about six months in total on the road, if even that. Obviously driving around here, hot temperatures, about 35 degrees Celsius in the day, lots of sand and dust, and it is going to need a proper detail. It will need an oil change service. You should do that at slightly more regular intervals when you've had a car out here, but I'll probably wait until it's in the USA. Perhaps for that, we'll see what exactly is going to happen. The tires following my track days at Yas and the Dubai Autodrome are pretty much finished and they're on back order as well. So they'll need ordering in advance. It will take a few months if I send it by ship to get it to the US. But basically there's a lot of sand everywhere. It needs a thorough, thorough clean, but it has run flawlessly. And that's one of the reasons for bringing this car out here, that, the reliability side of it, but also the practicality, the fact that it's got decent luggage space, especially if I'm going to have some big drives across America with it. But no error messages, no warnings, nothing like that. Everything you would want from a car like this on such a journey. So I can't fault it in the slightest for that. What we need to do now, though, is get started, hopefully move off without issues, and head from here to German experts to go put it up on the ramps, and see if I've actually done any damage to the underside. To start this up, we have to do the noisy start into individual, hold the shift pedal, press the button. Yes, C. 
so good with the Opus upgrades. Now we have done 7,629 kilometers. Have a few more still to go. Should probably get the door closed. It's actually only 29 degrees Celsius right now, which is fairly cold, but obviously we need some air con because otherwise this is going to be a struggle. So do you know what? Probably for these conditions, I should put it in slippery. We've got slippery mode. I've not used slippery mode. Fantastic. Reduced power. Stops you doing something stupid. It's a bit more hard pack as soon as we get over this way. Thankfully flat enough here. But basically we're at part of the beach, which is kind of fun. Obviously Dubai sitting right along the sea. We're also gonna to need to get it cleaned up because on the windscreen, especially over on my side, we've got bits of um, tire, <laughs> rubber I should say, <laughs> that are kind of splattered all over it from driving at Yas. This is actually a total non-issue and thankfully we're not very far from German experts. It's a big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. They've got a completely new state-of-the-art workshop, perfect for cars like this, as their name suggests really, um, to get it up on the ramps and to give it a bit of a, an inspection and to go through all of this and figure out what I've done wrong to it while it's been here. This is a bit rough, which is why I'm going quite so slowly, by the way, because I don't want to risk um, grinding out my front splitter any more than I need to. Okay, we're getting towards the more hard pack stuff. So I suppose if we weren't in slippery mode, if we were just in any other mode right now, it would probably... Yeah. Actually, for Cup 2Rs, I didn't even slide. It's quite disappointing. Um, let's go to the road and make our way over. The convenient thing about this location is that we are right in the center of Dubai, between the two areas. Downtown is up in front of us. Obviously, the marina was back behind where we began. And we're kind of halfway right in the middle which is the perfect location obviously um, to be able to have the best access oh there are some f1 cars formula cars just chilling up there i saw in the background right we need to exit here the road network sometimes takes a little bit of adjusting to to try and find the right places but we are literally i think around the corner i have actually driven past a few times so it's quite cool to now be bringing this car directly two German experts and the thing is with the tarmac out here and all of the roads are super smooth it's all really really nicely finished it makes life very suited to this car shall we say you know the stiffer suspension but even if you're running I mean soft at the moment but even if you're running it in a stiff setup it's still pretty chilled um, and I've had a lot of fun popping the front splitter in and out each time but on the right here we have our destination German experts car maintenance where we are pulling up with this car to go and get cracking on. It is time to move my car in towards the workshop. Sounds very nice in here, but let me quickly show you around at German experts and there's a Maserati MC12 right here. So some cars in the showroom and display side, but behind the lifts wrap all the way around, extending throughout, state-of-the-art facility. You can see multiple Rolls-Royce Cullinans, Ferrari 812 Superfast. There are different sections for different brands that German experts work with. And as you can see, there are quite a few here, all trained technicians. My car looking truly fabulous as it will be maneuvered through and taken in towards the back. And we'll take a little look at some of the cars that are around here as well at the moment. The lights on the solar beam paint look very, very, very nice. How bizarre seeing it heading through. We have the likes of a Bronco, an Escalade, a Cullinan, the Maybach GLS, 992 Turbo S. We need to talk about this for a moment. The Maserati MC12, one of only 50, the sister car to the Ferrari Enzo appreciating in value like you would not believe. And by the way, not the only hypercar here. We're gonna head through and take a look in a moment. Lovely Aston Martin Vanquish Volante. And look at that new Rolls-Royce Ghost, that dark pearlescent metallic green with the very, very light colored interior. That is stunning. Now, German experts obviously offer lots of different services. We're gonna get my car up on the lifts up at the far end at the moment and head through and go and have a proper inspection of this. Thankfully, for a low car like this, we have the perfect system for lifting it up to take a look underneath. This is the entire Mercedes section, effectively. Mercedes-Benz, Maybach, Smart, many different cars that can be worked on. 
But as this goes up, I'm gonna get my first look at quite how unfortunate we could say the underside is no doubt in need of a desperate clean but one of the first things you start to notice with the gt black series is how many aero pieces that you have under the bottom of this car which is why it constantly scrapes now i can't immediately see anything that's missing thankfully it doesn't actually look too bad either to be honest the guys will do a full inspection while i uh, step away to go and show you the other rather special cars here but just at first glance, under here, it's not all that bad. Perhaps up front, there might be some marks, just to have a quick nosy here. Basically what scrapes are these, but thankfully, because they're kind of soft plastic, they just bend and don't actually break. Obviously a lot of scraping to this, but not a problem. Again, easily replaceable, a proper nosy. A little bit of scraping here, but that's all part and parcel of actually driving a car. That's not too bad, to be honest. It's always fascinating to look under here. You can see the titanium of the Opus system as well, doing the job it's supposed to. Right, I better leave the guys to do their full look at it. I've honestly never seen a workshop like this, from pulling in off the main road, parking up here, look at the lights and the display, going through to the service advisors, discussing what's going to be done to the car, opening a file, keeping it all connected, and obviously the showroom over that side, and then, it continues over here as well and you can see this is the area for the Volkswagen Group cars so Lamborghinis and Porsches and Audis etc there is also the washing street right in the center you can see the way that the lifts for the different areas carry around and as cars get more and more complicated as time goes by obviously it's very important to have technicians who are trained for those particular cars with the right knowledge but also the right equipment hence why there are these distinct different areas depending on the different lifts and different access to what might be needed but here have a little feast of your eyes around this room. Toro Rosso F1 car, Hennessy Venom GT, and the Tramontana. We also have the Cadillac CT4, the Tesla Model 3, those are cars for sale. And obviously here, the tandem seating, crazy looking thing. I did take a look at these, or at one of these in the past, absolutely wild. We've got what I presume must be a 2012 or 2013 Toro Rosso, because we've got Ricardo and Jules Eric Verne on there as well. Always wild to see those. And then over this side is the Hennessy Venom GT from Hennessy over in Texas, of course. One of, I think, only 13 in total based on the Lotus chassis, but well over a thousand horsepower. Absolutely ridiculous, 270 odd miles per hour. And you do not see many of those around anywhere. Aston Martin V12 Vantage S, lovely thing. Then we've got an S-Class, S500 and a Bentley Brooklands. Obviously, meanwhile, my car is being worked on in there, but they have technicians trained in so many different brands. The state-of-the-art location, and this is a small fraction of the size of the Abu Dhabi facility, where there is even more by way of parts storage. There are some parts on site here that are required. Others are shuttled backwards and forwards. They also do delivery and drop-off with a fleet of trucks insured to transport the cars, which is quite a luxury out here. Many of the transporters wouldn't have the right kind of coverage. That's very important. And yeah, I'm actually really quite impressed by what I'm looking at. I've never seen a workshop facility like this. It's hospital style clean. It's exactly where, if you're having a car like this and you want it worked on, the right place to be. Back over with my car and all is basically ship shape as you would expect. There's one minor thing to take a quick look at. And of course, also the tires and talking tires. Let's just come and check out how much rubber there is that I've just been picking out from here and plenty more around. And if you take a look at these, obviously lots of pickup and not much tread. In fact, on the inside here, we're at about two and a half millimeters. Now the Cup 2Rs for this have about four and a half millimeters from new. So two and a half isn't a total disaster, but it means not a lot of life left. And the other issue is that to get a set of Cup 2Rs with the MO1A stamp and with the GT Black Series graphic, which is super cool, obviously the specific tire for the car, they're currently on back order and going to be very hard to find, but needed in the really near future, especially at the front tires. While the rears might have had a little bit of life left, the fronts are at effectively the start of delamination and need to be swapped out for the inside edges. So these are gonna to have to be done, but about two millimeters of inside tread, so still legal, but at the end and need replacing. So that's what's going to have to be done ASAP. Now the front of the car is all in fairly good shape. We're going to have to get it cleaned up at the wash bay to get rid of some of the rubber that's on it ready for transport because you want a car to be cleaned. Well, it needs to be cleaned for transportation. The only thing that's quite funny, have a look in here, 
not quite sure if you can see, but there are basically some leaves inside which have been around the world with this car from Europe. They come in through here and they stay in because there's no easy way to get them out. No access through the top, no access around the sides, only this tiny little opening under there for aero, which makes it impossible. And yeah, I'm carrying leaves around the world. Underneath the car, to show you quickly the little issue, is with these that I hadn't spotted before. These are exactly what catches sitting just behind the front wheels. So when you drop off a speed bump, it scrapes on the underside of the body. It's these that have slightly deformed, but there's literally just a set of the four screws, I guess, to replace that. Can't be too expensive as it's just a piece of soft plastic. So I'll keep them for the time being. It's the same on both sides. So we'll get those changed down the line. But basically, it's done a pretty good job so far, passing all the tests, exactly what we want from it. The more time I spend around this car, the more I like the sound of it. But they're gonna take it now over towards the washing street. My car is currently getting a rinse down then. They do actually have a fully automatic machine here in this dedicated space, but they're kindly doing mine by hand. So that will be done in a few minutes. Meanwhile, I'd like to come and show you what they have over here that you might have already noticed in the lounge area. They make their own coffee tables with engine blocks. There are various different types, finished with differing accessories and other details, also painted. And have a look at this one in the red and gold, the exact colors almost of my Ford GT. Also over here, there's a very nice V6 in the silver and gold. And one day I'd love to have something exactly like this in the Museum. The finish and style of these is so cool. The ultimate accessory for any lounge or chill out area or something like this. It's a really, really cool place that they've got here for this kind of thing. Look at this example as well. Look at the detail, even with some of the components inside it. I think that's even BMW's Austin Yellow, that one actually on a V8, presumably a BMW block. Um, what else do we have? Yep, again, look, this is an M5. I know this is an M5 engine. But they did actually mention it before, but in Marina Bay Blue, the V8. That's really smart with the pistons as well, like this to be the table support. Nice attention to detail. All done and looking magnificent. This is of course the end of the customer journey when it gets parked up in the base here, ready to be collected and taken onwards from there. This is looking so good. Obviously, as I said, being cleaned, a big part of getting the car ready for its onward travel. And this is a small fraction of what they offer here at German Experts. They also have the body shop, uh, a body shop actually on site here, but an even bigger body shop over in Abu Dhabi. They also offer warranties also in any parts that they do as part of repairs also come with two years of warranty. So pretty much the entire package and service. And if I was based out here, my cars are gonna be coming here. If I was moving here at some point in the future, this would be the right way to go about it. But for now, that is looking really quite lovely and ready to go onwards from here. We are heading onwards. Light is quickly falling, but this means I need to plan it a little bit to make sure we run out of fuel. We're pretty low, but that needs to be down below an eighth for transit in case it's gonna fly, because that's the rules if you're sending a car up in the air. Anyway, big thanks to the team here. We will definitely see the guys again when we next return. We'll pull out when there's a gap in the uh, traffic always. A little bit busy around here, but hopefully not too long. And then we can get a move on 20 minutes from here. My last drive. This is literally my last drive in this car out here in the UAE. And this is the small disadvantage of right hand drive right now, but we've got a gap so we can go for sure. There we go. Perfecto. Right, onwards. Final drive in the UAE. We are now only two kilometers away, the final stretch towards the Dubai Autodrome, where we've been quite a few times. And thankfully, I have managed to get the fuel down enough. And I suppose, yeah, it needs to be, for flight at least, it needs to be below an eighth of a tank, and that's down just below an eighth. This is perhaps one of our final scraping speed bumps, just over the front wheels, like I said, and then you touch it as the weight of the car drops down, even at five kilometers an hour, that was still savage. At least, however, this last tiny stretch of driving is kind of fun, about as fun as it gets without heading out to the main kind of mountain road areas. I'm doing my best to make sure that we're completely out of fuel. I'm gonna miss driving this car out here. It has been 
a phenomenally cool experience. Now, I've been lucky to drive quite a few nice cars out here in the past. A12 super fast. I had for a few days from Ferrari, DBX, Bentayga, uh, thinking further back, McLaren 570, no, 540C, in fact. Drove for a bit. Audi R8, uh, Spider, Audi TT RS. But driving my own car around here has just been... <laughs> a really 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 cool experience in every possible way and knowing now obviously it's prepared I've taken out everything that I've been leaving in the car so that it can travel obviously it can't go with stuff it can go with the car stuff but you can't send personal possessions with it due to customs and all of that side of things uh, so now it's just a case of swinging this round dropping it off and saying farewell to it the last 700 meters to go well here we have it the car is parked up in the corner at cars facility for the time being to go through all of the documents to be shipped onwards but what a time it has been with this car to have it out here in dubai to enjoy the gt black series as i said earlier the reverse of where my channel really began filming cars from the middle east over in london and now to have enjoyed the opposite experience of that it has been a tremendous journey so thank you very much to everyone who has been part of it thank you for joining thank you to quant fury for making it possible to bring this car out thank you of course today to german experts for looking after it to go through the inspection so that at least i know what is needed wherever it touches down next and of course thank you to cars shipping as well for their help to move this around the world what an unbelievable and unforgettable time this has been so many highlights, so many memories, so much awesomeness, so many kilometers on the road, 2,714 kilometers to be precise. Yeah, truly remarkable. So thank you very much for being part of it. That brings to a close this chapter for now, onwards, most likely to the USA, to the East Coast to begin. Let's see if that happens. I'll update you for sure when I have firm, concrete decisions made. That's it for now though. Thank you very much as always guys, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.